Mike, whenever you're ready. Thanks, Matt. Uh, it was an exciting off-season for us, and we've had a couple of goals and aims that we were hoping to try to accomplish. And, you know, we kind of feel like mission accomplished from the standpoint that, you know, most teams that have the asset war chest that we have right now tend to be usually teams that are usually really poor from the standpoint of either maybe in, in American sports leagues, teams that draft very high, have a lot of picks, usually hadn't done well the year prior. Uh, teams with allocation money tend to be teams usually like expansion teams. So one of our goals was to be in a situation where we can kind of weaponize our roster and have the assets to do the things we want to do while also have a roster that we believe is as competitive as any third year club in MLS in recent history. So you know, we're encouraged about where we are right now and we think uh, you know, today's addition to Super Draft helped us move forward in that process as well. Thank you, Mike. We'll start with Drake Hills, then we'll go to Tim Sullivan. Go ahead, Drake. Drake, first off, if I'm getting fashion advice from you, I'm in trouble, man. That's cold blooded. That's cold blooded. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if it was Tom Bogart, I would say maybe okay. But, I mean, like, uh, you know, in, until you up your game, okay? Uh, Drake, uh, look, uh, uh, for us, I think I uh, went to bed last night thinking about what would we have to do to move up to get the guy that we identified as our top choice, which was Longmire. Uh, when you look at the other players that we identified, uh, our feeling was the guys we wanted, and specifically our top choice, would not be around at 26. So for us, our hope was trying to identify other teams that maybe would offer us the opportunity to move up, uh, maybe looking at the fact that we were doubling down on our ability to identify talent and maybe try to, to grab someone in a spot where maybe, as we've done most of our last two years, try to identify potentially undervalued players externally that we valued highly and maybe try to acquire them without giving up as much as possible. So, you know, someone like Longmire for us uh, had a chance to watch him extensively. Uh, you know, our, our staff and I would say when you look at the job that Chance Myers, our director of player personnel, uh, you know, a group of guys worked closely with him, Luke Sasano, Ike Capara. I think very quickly for us we kind of felt like the best center back on the board for, that we were looking at was him. And, you know, uh, uh, for us, whether we played with three center backs or two center backs, knowing in a World Cup year uh, that Walker would be away quite a bit, uh, for us to be able to strengthen our depth with not only a person that was the best player on the board, but we thought fit our group the best. That was really important. Uh, you've heard me talk a lot over the last couple of years about cohesion uh, and fit. And for us, it wasn't just who was the best player on the board as far as the best center back. But for us, it was who we thought fit our group the best. And within the combination of tools that he has, his athletic ability, uh, his ability to close players down, ability in the air, uh, speed in a turn. So he fit really, really well with the guys we have. Thank you, Mike. We'll go next to Tim Sullivan and Ben Wright. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned um, trying to figure out what you needed to do to get up from number 26 to be able to draft Ahmed. Um, when did this deal come together, and, and how did you get the deal put together to move up to number 10? And um, you know, were you considering that you might have to go even higher when you woke up this morning to potentially not miss out on him? Tim, truth be told, uh, the last 48, 72 hours, you, know, you start trying to kind of feel out uh, the other contemporaries and try to get an idea of who's potentially looking to move their pick, who's going to use their pick. Uh, I would say that uh, we did start with teams slightly higher uh, than Colorado. Uh, from our standpoint, I would tell you, like, uh, uh, you know, we were committed to kind of do we had to to acquire him. You know, the lower you go, the more you start to kind of hold your breath and hope that your guy's still going to be on the board. Uh, we got to a point when we got to 10, we just didn't think he'd be around that much longer. And then you start looking at the potential return, how much you're willing to spend to get your guy. And I, I think for us, you know, uh, you know, working with Colorado, um, being able to exchange our pick. I think they wanted to stay in a draft, potentially trade down. We just thought we weren't going to get the player we wanted at our spot. So, you know, for us, the opportunity to go to 10, we jumped at it. Go ahead, Ben, and we'll go to Tom Boger. Mike, you touched on this a little bit, but 
what what do you specifically see from Longmire that, that you like, um, and where do you think he kind of fits in with the rotation of guys that you have? Obviously, Jack Walker and, and Dave, but then Robert and and, and um, Josh. Where does he fit in with those guys? It's a great question. You know, what I would tell you is, uh, you know, each of those guys you mentioned are all a little different, and. You know, we mentioned about cohesion. I think initially when we first talked about the idea of pairing Dave and Walker together, I think they both had unique uh, athletic attributes. You know, Dave's speed in the turn is outstanding. You know, I mean, I could probably count it for sure, count on one hand in the last two seasons. Guys who got behind him doesn't happen very often. You know, and, and look, I mean, Walker, I mean, I, I, mean, I think it's safe to say he's the best player in the league in the air, defensively and offensively, you know. So when you look at what those two present, and, you know, when we first – looked at Jack Mayer, you know, we used to look at Jack before we had Walker, and, and the guy, I have to tell you, that we compared him to when he was 19, 20 years old was Walker at that stage. You know, we saw some similar attributes to them. Uh, uh, literally, their height and weight very similar. Uh, you know, uh, the things that they do well. Uh, what I could tell you, I mentioned a lot to, to, to Jack. Jack played more games and more minutes in his second year than Walker had in his second year. You know, uh, in Dallas, in a very good Dallas team, you had a three-man rotation at center back between George John, Matt Hedges and, and, and Walker Zimmerman, and eventually Walker went from being the young, you know, the young GA as a 19, 20 year old rotating in, they went a linchpin there. We kind of see Jack having a similar ascension in our group. You know, for us, I would say, you know, uh, Ahmed's a little is probably he's different than those guys, but I'd say he's probably most comparable athletically probably to Romney from the standpoint of uh, his pace and a turn. Uh, I think our, our thought, we looked at like who we would kind of put together. We kind of thought that maybe having another guy with the pace he had and his, uh, his ability to win balls in the air would be a good fit with that group. Uh, I, I think he's a, he's a good player passing. It certainly can improve on, you know, breaking lines and connecting passes. Uh, you know, Jack Mayer was one of the top center backs in the league as far as completion percentage uh, in passing and also in forward passing last year. So I kind of think that whoever we, we play a med with, whether it's one of the three incumbents who played a lot last year, whether it's someone like Robert Castellanos, who we think a lot of also, we kind of think that this move helps us give us the right kind of depth, whether we're playing with two center backs or three center backs. Go ahead, Tom, and we'll go to Tim. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, for taking the time. Um, a couple questions here to shift away from the draft a little bit. Um, I believe it's the first time that you're speaking publicly outside of the press release since the Sean Davis news. Um, I guess, you know, just how much does Sean add to this team? And a second question, what is left on the agenda for this team by way of roster building for the season ahead of either opening day or preseason season starting? Uh, well, first of all, Drake, I want to apologize to you. I thought Tommy was wearing one of his uh, Hawaiian shirts. So after seeing that, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I want to apologize for rating him higher as far as fashion tips. Yeah, that was a bad, that was a bad take off, off the jump, but I was muted, so I didn't want to put me uh, look, Sean is someone, obviously, who's uh, really well thought of around the league. When you think what he offers on um, both sides of the ball and on and off the field, uh, you know, I, I, he clearly is somebody who displays we talk about an awful lot here in, like, NSC DNA. I think he has that in spades. You know, so for us to add someone who I think can be a linchpin in our group, uh, you know, not only in our midfield to, to pair him with the likes of guys like Anibal and Dax and Anunga, but to continue to kind of build in this spine that, you know, defensively has had the best goals against average and most shutouts over the first two seasons. You know, what I would say about Sean is maybe similar guys like Anibal or Dax. Uh, I think sometimes in our sport we get too caught up looking at traditional numbers, you know, players whether they're 10 or an 8 or a 6. And, you know, I think one thing we talk about a lot is universality. You know, having guys who, you know, who are midfielders opposed to an attack midfielder or a defensive midfielder or a box-to-box box, box box midfielder. And, and I would tell you, I think Sean fits in really, really well. If I was going to look at the guys we have right now, you know, when you look at maybe someone who has similar attributes to Dax on the field, but with Anibal's athletic attributes, I mean, that's frightening. You know, so to offer somebody like that and to pair with these other guys we're talking about, you know, it's really exciting to think about what someone like Sean possesses and what he can add to this already, like, really established midfield and group in general. Uh, as far as the rest of the offseason, look, uh, you know, mentioned about the opportunity to acquire allocation money. We've talked in the past about, uh, you know, where we just finished the super draft, unlike sports like, like basketball or football in our country, you know, uh, uh, where, you know, collecting draft picks tends to be the biggest asset. And hourly, it's all about allocation money, you know. So when you look at our plan about trying to run it back from the standpoint of, you know, this last summer we talked about a successful window and trying to tie up our guys long term, to now have this kind of allocation money without losing one of the key guys in our core, and that is not to, to take anything away from Alistair because I think a lot about him personally, and I certainly wish him well in his endeavors. 
You know, uh, for us to be able to, to add that kind of allocation money to increase our war chest with the group of players we already have, uh, I think sets up for a, a really encouraging spot for our third season. So, you know, we're excited about that. And you know, at this stage, you know, I think for Gary and his staff, we had to Bradenton really try and take inventory, look at the group of guys we have right now to make sure that we have everything we need. Uh, feel really good about the group of guys we're bringing back and also feel even better about the fact that at some point, whether to freshen an area up or upgrade something, you know, we have roster spots, international spots, and a war chest again. Go ahead, Tim, then we'll go to Ben. Yeah, you didn't roast Tom for his mustache, so while we're all commenting on each other's fashion, um, but, um, you, you kind of alluded to it at the very end there, but as the team goes to Bradenton, are there specific areas that you're going to have to be looking at to see if there are still needs before the season starts? Obviously, um, losing your starting right back is one that everybody's kind of been pointing to as something that, that maybe from outside the program they you know, are looking for answers for. What are some of the things that you guys are going to be evaluating down there? Look, Alistair was a super popular player also, you know, and, uh, you know, he's uh, uh, someone we wish the best of luck, not only in Montreal, but, you know, going forward internationally also. But, you know, for us, we actually were hoping to upgrade it right back. You know, I think we felt this last year, whether it's, uh, you know, quality of crosses, uh, whether it's more execution on that flank, I think it's something that we want to try to improve in. And, you know, uh, uh, when you look at the players we return, you know, we think that some of those guys can fill in that spot. And we also have uh, some other candidates potentially they will continue to kind of explore. And, you know, for us, uh, you know, a big thing heading into this season is being able to demonstrate the kind of consistency we displayed our first two years. Uh, you know, at home, you know, we were one of seven teams in MLS history to finish a whole season undefeated. Uh, on the road, you know, we were fifth in MLS in road points, you know, and had one of the lowest goals against average in a road in MLS history. You know, so, you know, saying all that to now have to go to the Western Conference, uh, when you look at not only the idea of shifting conferences, but when you think about one of the farthest southeast teams in our league having to now have to play that expansive a schedule, when it's all said and done, we would have traveled more miles this season than any team in MLS history. So, uh, you know, there are very few teams got in the playoffs uh, each of their first three seasons. Uh, absolutely, we continue to kind of aspire to, to be one of the very few number of teams that can join that group. Uh, to do that, I think, uh, you know, the continued ascension of some of our guys, you saw what players like Hani Mukhtar did, or Randall Leal did from year one to year two. You know, I think you'll see some similar growth from some other players on our team. And, you know, again, if there are areas that we think we need to kind of freshen up, and, you know, I have to say very candidly, I, I don't know there's any spot that, that I would say I'm worried about going into preseason. I feel kind of good with the group we have, uh, knowing that if, if we do feel we have to, you know, we're primed and ready to do so. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, Mike, you took uh, Will Meyer in the second round. Um, I believe that that's three goalkeepers currently. Can you update us on um, Brian Meredith? I know you were in talks to bring him back. And, and how do you see the, the goalkeeper core shaping out right now? Can I comment on that? Okay, so uh, uh, Ben, we'll, we'll, we'll comment in the coming days about uh, Brian Meredith's status. So, uh, you know, uh, in regards to, you know, goalkeepers, what I would tell you also is, uh, and you guys know kind of uh, our thoughtful approach about not only using data, but also looking at odds and trends. And, you know, you see how many center backs came off the board in this draft. You know, certainly it was, uh, you know, it was one, you know, our expectation, our board was, you know, that we thought we got the, the top center back on the, on the draft board. But, you know, uh, when you also look at players who have transitioned from the amateur college ranks in MLS, it's not uncommon to see players in the back line do that. Uh, you know, for us also, when you see how important the goalkeeper position is, you look at players like Matt Turner, you know, who was a relatively unknown, or Tim Elia. Look at someone like our own Joe Willis. You know, for us, we've kind of joked about the fact that we're just going to keep drafting goalkeepers until we can find the heir apparent to Joe at some point. But, uh, you know, we're very happy with Elliot, and he had a great season in USL this last year on loan. They gained some important experience they needed to have. You know, but our hope is by drafting someone else today, along with our returning players, that we've got a good core and kind of ready to go.